The World Economic Forum was founded in 1971 by Klaus Schwab and others to encourage so-called public-private cooperation between government and business. Most of the large corporations you could name are part of the WEF. These are the people who run the governments, the news organizations, the industrial, the big tech, the big pharma, you name it. These are the people which power our world. They hold a widely known meeting at Davos once a year. In July 2020, the WEF published Klaus Schwab and Thierry Mallory's book, COVID-19, The Great Reset, which pleads that, quote, without delay, we need to set in motion the Great Reset. This is not a nice to have, but an absolute necessity. That's what they say, unquote. The authors declare, it is incumbent upon us to take the bull by the horns. The pandemic gives us the chance. It represents a rare but narrow window of opportunity to reflect, reimagine, and reset our world. The authors say that their book offers a snapshot of, quote, a crucial moment in history, unquote, and tells, quote, what the post-pandemic world might or perhaps should look like, unquote. The opening lines illuminate their viewpoint. The worldwide crisis triggered by the coronavirus pandemic has no parallel in modern history. We cannot be accused of hyperbole when we say it is plunging our world in its entirety and each of us individually into the most challenging times we've faced in generations. It is our defining moment. People feel the time for reinvention has come. The coronavirus pandemic marks a fundamental inflection point in our global trajectory. The world as we knew it in the early months of 2020 is no more dissolved in the context of the pandemic, unquote. So according to the authors, the leaders of all our institutions, government, industry, religion, you know, they need to combine to get us through this mighty emergency. Interestingly, such a combination of agencies is mentioned in chapter 18 of the Bible's book of Revelation, a thought to which we'll return in a bit. Now, according to Schwab's book, all humanity is engaged in a war against an invisible foe. Isn't it convenient how this COVID crisis has no aggressors? Schwab urges governments and corporations to use the situation to mobilize our societal resources against this supposedly existential threat. The COVID emergency is so allegedly severe that he calls on society to actually redefine its social contracts by giving government a larger role in elites more power. The authors propose that these solutions will result in the glorious advent of global prosperity, justice, and goodness. And the way to that, says Schwab, is via a, quote, macro reset in which, quote, governments will strongly encourage public-private partnerships, unquote. Now, Schwab does not remind his readers, however, of the one word which is conspicuously absent from his books. It is a much more accurate term for public-private partnerships, and that word is fascism. In so-called public-private partnerships, private business may act as the administrator, but the state controls the reins. Fascism is when the power of the purse, you know, business, foundations, nonprofits, and so on, when that power is merged with the power of the sword, government. This is how policy is created and imposed. And it's how a society is reset from liberty and productivity to executing its activities by coercion and plunder. The reader is warned almost relentlessly throughout this book against wasting the, quote, opportunity, unquote, presented by the coronavirus epidemic. And you know, one might be, might be forgiven for hearing in these warnings flavors of a grandiose program set into motion and running within a limited time frame, just maybe. Quote, if we decide to resume our lives just as before, the COVID-19 crisis will have gone to waste, unquote. Here's another. The, quote, the COVID-19 crisis cannot go to waste. Now is the time to enact sustainable environmental policies, unquote. Here's another one. The moment must be seized to take advantage of this unique window of opportunity, unquote. Here's another one. Some leaders take advantage of the shock inflicted by the pandemic to implement long-lasting and wider environmental changes. They will, in effect, make good use of the pandemic by not letting the crisis, let me guess, yes, go to waste. Here's another one. The European Green Deal 
launched by the European Commission is a massive endeavor and the most tangible manifestation yet of public authorities deciding not to let the COVID-19 crisis go to waste. To Schwab and his technocrats, exploiting what they call a, quote, rare but narrow window of opportunity is, quote, an absolute necessity, unquote. So this book also talks about a lot of the mainstream narratives we're used to hearing, it's like a manual designed to reinforce and support measures that the government leaders have used these past 22 months to erase societal freedoms and to advance globalist talking points. Listen to Schwab's propaganda, quote, there is nothing new about the confinement and lockdowns imposed upon much of the world to manage COVID-19, unquote. This, this assertion is, is just false. Locking down the healthy, that is very new. That's not normal. Schwab describes social distancing, hand washing, wearing masks, and self-isolation as, quote, the standard tools for dealing with a pandemic. Now, I've been around a little while here on planet Earth, and I don't remember any occasion ever where we did all those things or where those things were forced upon us by the government. Do you? Do you remember anything like that? Am I just having a, a memory lapse? So the book also talks about the necessity of having our immunity boosted, although it really doesn't go into the vaccine business. But anyway, listen to this. Not only are our lockdowns nothing new, he says, but, quote, and I'm, I'm quoting right out of the book, creative characters thrive in lockdown. Isaac Newton, for example, flourished during a plague, unquote. Oh, oh wait a minute. Isaac Newton didn't, fa his plague wasn't anything like ours. He didn't face anything like our uh, issue. I mean, people were dying in a massive, massive percentages during the plague. This is 99% survivable. It, 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 and Isaac Newton wasn't in a lockdown either, was he? Did that ever happen? Here's another one, quote, a growing number of citizens favor smartphone tracking, unquote. Really? How many people do you know who favor that? I wonder if Edward Snowden favors that, you know, because, hey, it's a pandemic, you know. How about this one? Quote, refusing to wear a mask in public is a moral choice, as indeed the decision to wear one, unquote. Well, that's quite interesting to put it in those terms. See, COVID-19, this book, COVID-19, The Great Reset, sustains the current heroes and victims list with which we've be, all become quite familiar, including systematic racism, George Floyd, Black Lives Matter, and over and over again repeats the complaints about inequality. Inequality, inequality, inequality. There's dozens of those in there. So this alleged inequality is suggested to be so severe that society should renegotiate its social contract. Then let me quote, quote, as we progressively move away from the most acute moments of the crisis and begin a thorough examination of what went right and what didn't, we should expect a lot of soul-searching that will ultimately lead to a redefinition of the terms of our social contract, unquote. Here's another one. Quote, as economies restart, there is an opportunity to embed greater societal equality and sustainability into the recovery, accelerating rather than delaying progress toward the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals and unleashing a new era of prosperity, unquote. This is a pretty important book, isn't it? Wow, I mean... I'm glad the blueprint's all laid out there for us. If only we'd have had this a couple of years ago. You know, it makes me wonder if I went into the hospital with a ingrown toenail, if they wouldn't want to amputate my whole leg. Hey, it's, it's an extreme opportunity. You know, when are we going to get a chance to amputate his leg like this? Now, you might recall that infamous WEF video from last year, which assured us that by 2030, we'd own nothing and we'd be happy. Perhaps Schwab's public-private partnerships, or fascism, really does constitute a radical break with how we've lived. But just maybe? I wonder if we realize what changing the social contract really would mean. The social contract, you know, it constitutes the societal expectations about rights, duties, privileges. Really, it is absurd to say that the basic rights of today's Western civilization need to be redefined. Unless someone is trying to suggest that people maybe have too much freedom. The WEF de-emphasizes individual rights, and people are addressed in this book all over from cover to cover 
is collectives, groups and collectives. Almost all of it is collectives, collectives. We've got to think about the greater good, the collective, see. Schwab writes urgently about a need to address what is the common good. By the way, I've noticed that whenever people indicate a concern for the common good, it usually means that they're pursuing some agenda which increases their control over the lives of others while reducing someone else's freedom. It seems more likely that Schwab and his selected stakeholders hope to inculcate changes that would forever alter our world and would shift control into technocratic hands. This book supports the boilerplate mainstream narrative that we've grown used to. Here's a few examples of it. Quote, by now an increasing number of scientists have shown that it is in fact the destruction of biodiversity caused by humans that is the source of new viruses like COVID-19, unquote. Oh, really? Here's another one. Quote, the pandemic has acted as a dramatic eye-opener to the public at large on the severity of risks related to environmental degradation and climate change. Yes, you knew I was going to say climate change, didn't you? But compelling evidence has shown that SARS-CoV-2 is, is human engineered. As Dr. Peter Bregan points out, quote, no SARS-CoV has ever been found in nature. Furthermore, no SARS-CoV epidemic or other emergence of SARS-CoV among humans has ever been traced to nature, but at least seven have been traced to labs, including SARS-CoV-2, unquote. So COVID-19 appears more likely, much more likely, to be the result of biologically weaponized gain-of-function research, either intentionally or unintentionally, unleashed upon the world. COVID-19 was never caused by the destruction of biodiversity. It's not because of climate change that COVID-19 exists. It's because of the machinations of, of technocrats, maybe like some of these guys. And when I review uh, Kennedy's book here, in the near future, I'll tell you about some of that. Schwab suggests that we reframe our perception of time into, I'm not making this up, into BC and AC, before COVID and after COVID. So we should divide time into two periods based on a disease rather than the cure. You know, BC 80, that is before Christ and Anno Domini, year of our Lord. BC 80, Jesus is the cure, he's the solution. Are we gonna change our whole civilization so that instead of dividing time, from the time that Jesus, whether you believe or not in him, but he's purported to have come and said to have died for us, I certainly believe it. Are we going to shift from that to dividing the time, the way we've referred to time on this planet, based on when a disease happened or didn't happen? And if we're going to do that, why don't we divide it at the Great Plague? Why do we divide it when we get a 99.9% .9 survivable disease? It doesn't make not the fraction of sense. So anyway, among other questions Schwab asks in this book is, quote, is it acceptable not to help my neighbor who is infected with COVID-19, unquote. Actually, you know that for a long time before Schwab was born, people have often helped their neighbors with this or that problem. But remember, to a technocrat, every problem looks like an issue at which he's the only guy that has a solution to it. And what Schwab proposes is that what we need is fascism to solve these problems, a private-public partnership. But that's fascism. You know, I've noticed that those who want to help you against your will are often the most dangerous people you ever meet. Schwab claims that, quote, a large majority of citizens around the world, they want economic recovery from the corona crisis to prioritize climate change. He's got a little poll in his footnotes that he took. Do you really think, is this what they're thinking about in Bangladesh and Argentina and in the Yukon? I mean, where are people really thinking about climate change this way? So a majority of Earth citizens believe this stuff and they want to trust, entrust their well-being and everything to a group of technocratic tinkerers, really. So that's this, we talked a little bit about this book. Did you know that the last book in the Bible, in Revelation chapter 18, describes a divine cataclysmic end time judgment of Babylon and its last day associates. It describes an alliance of Babylon, you know, false religion, with human governments and merchants. It is interesting how Schwab's public-private partnership plan, that is, fascism, could align with that description in Revelation 18, isn't it? Schwab claims that, quote, the pandemic has forced all of us, citizens and policymakers alike, willingly or not, to enter into a philosophical debate about how to maximize the common good in the least damaging way possible, unquote. 
It seems somehow cartoonish to think that Davos man, you know, this transnational wealth seeking with few or no national or ethnic loyalties, these people are suddenly super deeply concerned with the common good of society, really. So Schwab would prefer that society rethink the social contract and the common good because, you know, his fantastic plan for controlling the world by elites who know better than the common person would require what? Well, it would require a shift of control from individuals to the World Economic Foundation's proposed fascist collectives. That's what it really would be. Schwab and Mallory's COVID-19, The Great Reset, is a warning direct from the horse's mouth, and my apology to actual horses, <laughs> that the world includes many who aren't as smart as they think they are and who do not love individual freedom but hate it. Drunk with imagined wisdom and power, they present themselves as would-be remodelers of civilization. They echo the builders millennia ago of the Tower of Babel, who said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heaven. That tower represented an attempt to change the social contract that God had designed. God did not permit them to complete it, nor will these tower builders see the completion of theirs.